Hi, my name is Chris Bullock. I'm the owner of The Wandering Bull. We sell Native American craft supplies. The website is wanderingbull.com. Check out our Facebook page. What we're going to talk about today is sewing with real sinew. We do a lot of sales with the imitation sinew. Some people get the two confused, but for the most part, we're going to talk about the real sinew today. Um, we sell deer backstrap and this is a piece of the deer backstrap and it basically runs from the neck down towards the butt of the animal. So these two are the deer um, and this guy is a is bison. Um, so the bison sinew obviously it's a larger animal and a much bigger and a much grainier um, coarser sinew. Um, prior to native people having um, linen thread, they were using sinew to sew. It's a great material. Once it dries, it holds its place. It's not going to unravel like thread does. And as you can see, it's, it's very fibrous. And um, these are leg tendons. Sinew as well. Obviously, you're not going to peel much thread off of these guys to sew with. What they would do with these is put them down, pound them flat, like break up all the fibers, and then glue them to um, the back of a bow. So there'd be a sinew-backed bow. And th this is the material they'd use for that sinew-backed bow. Um, once again, very difficult to work with, super strong. So to, to work with this, Basically here, we'll, we'll work with this fiber here. So when you're beading or sewing with it, you're going to end up with very small pieces. So and you got nice thin pieces, but look how short it is. So you're going to basically work that material down. And we're going to just sew with it for today. So I don't need a super fine piece, but look how that breaks up. So I've got some soaking in a bowl here. We'll break it up a little more. See how it's nice and soft now at this point? And on a nice surface, you can give them a, a roll and twist them. So basically they're just rolling on themselves. And you can set them aside to dry. So I've got three pieces. This piece is probably would work well for doing bead work. Um, but we're going to do, going to sew two pieces of brain tan leather together. Going to use a Glover's needle, which is a three-sided needle um, designed for sewing leather. It's got a big eye that will accommodate this heavy um, sinew. I can show you on these moccasins. These moccasins are Lakota, probably about 1890s, 1910. Rawhide soles, brain tan uppers, and they refer to this style of beadwork as salt and pepper. Um, mixed a pile of beads, still following the, um, the circumference of the moccasin, and just bead all the way up to the toe. But the reason I'm showing you this is if we can look at the sinew between the sole and the upper, that is real sinew. Um, probably bison, being those people are out on the plains, the bison is very heavy, um, coarse, and these moccasins are 110 years old. So obviously, the material works. Um, this pair of moccasins is newer, but same thing. The, you can see the, um, the sinew sticking out from that seam. Real, real sinew. This is what we refer to as imitation sinew. This is a waxed nylon cord. It has similar properties where it will break down like the real sinew for different sewing projects, beading, um, construction, but it's nylon. It does not have the same end results as, and you really can't see much difference if I mix them up, um, but you'll, this will outlast this. Um, the imitation sinew 
tends to stretch over time. Um, it certainly has its juices, but we're going to concentrate on the real sinew today. Real sinew does not come on a roll, um, basically comes on a strip. I'm going to twist that guy to a point. go. Nice short piece. You're lucky to get pieces that long. And you work with the sinew wet. And once it dries, it dries stiff. And obviously, you know, as long as it stays dry in the future, it will always maintain that uh, structural integrity when you're applying two pieces of material. I got two pieces of brain tan. I'm going to lay those guys together. Push down. Push down. I have this little tail, I'm going to basically sew over the tail so the rest of my stitches will cover that little piece which makes it stronger. The Plains tribes who were, or even the Eastern Woodlands people that use in Sanu would tie a knot. Um, they got pretty fancy and could twist a knot quickly and not have to be um, too concerned about it because once it dried that material will not unravel like thread if you have um, the thread will just brrr, pull right out of a piece of material unlike the sinew will not um, I have seen um, antique pieces where the sinew has broken for whatever reason and the beads still remain in place because they're stuck into the sinew so for longevity that's you know a perfect um, perfect material to sew with. They used what was available to them at the time. As Soon as they started receiving cotton thread and linen thread, of course they made the switch over. Um, it was easy to trade for that product than to um, be searching for a source of um, sinew. I had seen a big rawhide trunk and inside the trunk was hundreds and hundreds of pre-prepared pieces of sinew um, it was a, a work trunk. The woman had done all the work, placed the sinew in there to use it the future, at a future time. Um, so she had pre-prepared a huge quantity of it to use at a later time. So basically, that's what we have. So that's the outside. You don't see that stitching really. And that's the inside, and there's my tail. So, um, that's our little uh, spiel on real sinew. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, send us an email or jump on our 800 phone number, chrisbullockwanderingbull.com. Thanks a lot.